Hey everyone, there's a new version of the AudioQuest Jitterbug. This is called the AudioQuest FMJ. FMJ stands for Full Metal Jacket. And first of all, let me thank AudioQuest for sending this out to me for a review. Um, they did send this out to me review, for review, but they're not previewing this video or, or any of my videos or telling me what to say or anything like that. Um, just for my honest opinion on it. Um, and also, if you are a company that would like to send me any of your products for a review, just go ahead and contact me and I would be happy to review them in my channel or at least uh, consider them for review. So this is the AudioQuest Jitterbug FMJ. FMJ stands for Full Metal Jacket and of course this is the box that it comes in. And from what I understand, it's basically the same as the old Jitterbug except it has a metal housing now. And actually, actually uh, you can see up here, um, this is what's new about it. It says Full Metal Jacket FMJ shields against RF interference, so the metal housing provides some additional RF interference um, in addition to the internal circuitry. And then it also has a cover for the USB uh, port. And it says it's a carbon loaded RF noise dissipating input cover for when the jitterbug is used in parallel. So that's when you don't have anything plugged into it, like if you have two jitterbugs on your USB port, that's what that's for. So let's go ahead and open this puppy up and see what we get in the box. Okay. Actually, my manual, the manuals and stuff are in here. Okay, so this is the manual here. And also I see that you get uh, Koba's three, three months as of right now anyway. Uh, I'm not gonna flip it around because I know on the back is the code. Um, but actually, maybe I'll give this away to somebody. Yeah, why don't we do that? Because I actually have Koba's and you can't redeem this unless you're a new member. So if you want to try Kobuz for free for three months, I'll go ahead and give you the code um, to one lucky winner who leaves a comment in this video. So go ahead and leave a comment in this video. And let's say on June 15th, I'll do a random drawing and then I'll contact you if you're the winner and you can get uh, three free months of Kobuz streaming. All right, so let's set that aside and we'll set this aside. One of the things about AudioQuest is, you know, they're I don't know, maybe 50% a marketing company. Uh, as you can see, like this comes in a really nice box with really, really nice graphics. And if you ever buy any of AudioQuest cables, they come in like a really nice box as well. Bill Lowe, the owner of AudioQuest and founder, apparently approves all of their packaging, like all of their boxes. Um, so yeah, he, he wants stuff to come in a box, even if it's just like a small little adapter or small little RCA cable or something like that. Um, so they're really big on their marketing for sure. So this is the unit. Here is the AudioQuest Jitterbug FMJ. And yeah, as you can see, it, it does have a metal housing. And then right here, it has that little plastic shield here that apparently you know, prevents the noise from getting in there um, when, it's, when it's used just alone with nothing plugged into it. And then you've got the sort of gold-plated USB you know, plug there. But um, yeah, it says Jitterbug FMJ, and then on both sides actually, AudioQuest down here. So yeah, it seems like a really good build quality. It'll, it remains to be seen if this performs better than the prior version. Again, I don't expect much difference. Um, this is supposed to have more noise rejection built into it just because it's got a metal housing now, whereas the old one had a plastic housing. So this metal housing is supposed to reject more noise. And, and so that's the main difference. But internally, it's exactly the same as the um, old Jitterbug. And, and so here's the instruction manual. Basically, it just you can freeze frame this if you want. It just tells you what, how you can use it. You can use it in between your your source, like your computer and a DAC. Or if you have an empty USB port, you can um, put, use two of them and put one you know, in between the source and your DAC and then another one just in an empty USB port to help further with you know, noise and stuff like that. Um, and then here's the other side of the little instruction pamphlet if you wanna freeze frame that. It does, basically it says, don't use it with the AudioQuest Dragonfly uh, Cobalt because the Cobalt probably already has a, like a jitterbug built into it, but it does say that you can use it with the, the Dragonfly, Dragonfly Red and the Red Dragonfly Black. And of course you can use it on other devices as well. I have found that your mileage will vary typically with the AudioQuest Jitterbug. Um, it does do something if your USB is a little bit weak or noisy. For instance, I did notice uh, a pretty big difference in my car. And 
If you have a lower cost USB DAC, then you probably will also notice the difference. It'll help clean up that signal. But if you have a device like a DAC that already has a really good USB transceiver that is optimized and galvanically optimized and all that already, then the Jitterbug, in my opinion, or my experience anyway in the past, doesn't really do anything. Like for instance, my Cord uh, M Scaler or Hugo 2 or TT2, those are already primed for USB. So something like this doesn't make any difference and sometimes could even be a detriment in that case. But on lower end devices, you know, it's something that you might try, you know, if you have a cheaper DAC, um, you know, one of, the, one of the Dragonflies or maybe something from iFi or from Fio, you know, any cheaper DAC or something like that, that where they just throw in a USB transceiver, but they're not really putting in like any kind of isolation into that USB, um, the AudioQuest Jitterbug can make a difference. Um, so that's just been my experience in the past, but I am anxious to try this new version out, the AudioQuest FMJ, and see if it performs any better than the old version. You know, it might just also be a matter of the old uh, production run of the old version was running out, and they said, let's just go ahead and update the housing and make it metal, you know, and that's basically what they did. Um, give the product more of a long life that way, you know, just kind of update it. So, that, you know, so that might be, you know, the whole reason why they came out with this FMJ model. But anyway, um, I'll be interested to definitely test this out um, for a while and then come back with a review video, so stay subscribed for that. And again, on June 15th, 2021, I will give away the code for three free months of uh, Kobuz. Um, so make sure you leave a comment because you can only qualify if you leave a comment in this video uh, to win three free months of Kobuz, which by the way is my streaming service of choice these days because um, it has no MQA and you have a lot of high res streaming, 96 or even, you know, 24 or 192 streaming. And also their lowest tier is completely lossless as well. So yeah, make sure to leave a comment if you want to win. So thanks for watching my unboxing and first look at the AudioQuest Jitterbug FMJ.